Hello and welcome to Irish Medieval History with me, Michael from Clans and Dynasties. As you may be aware, I am one of the people who works in the background of this channel that our great host Philip Hayes has done a fantastic job of building on and bringing together many great YouTubers to show off some amazing history and I hope I can also do the same today. We are going to talk briefly about Clan Brewery. They were a leading clan in the Hebrides and the western seaboard of Scotland. The ancestor of the family was Rory McRagnall, grandson of the Great Somerley, of Clan Somerley of Clan Guthrid, who was a mid 12th century Norse Gaelic lord who through marital alliance and military conquest rose in prominence to create the Kingdom of Argyll and the Isles. On his death much of his kingdom was partitioned between his surviving sons. Ragnall's portion appears to have been in the Southern Hebrides and Kintyre. But in time, Ragnall rose in power and became the leading member of the MacSummerly. Ragnall is known to have styled himself as King of the Isles, Lord of Argyll and Kintyre, and Lord of the Isles. His claim to the title of King came from his maternal link to the Croven dynasty, a cadet branch of the Eemer, known as the Sons of Ivor. Ragnall's son and the clan progenitor Rory MacRagnall would spend his life, like many of his kin, embroiled in the conflicts of the Isles of Ireland and Britain. From attacking the McLaughlins of Ulster with Thomas of Galloway to supporting the McWilliams rebellion against the Scottish Crown, which saw them ousted from their lands in Kintia during Alexander's invasion of Argyll. In 1247, Rory would be killed leading maybe the first Gallo Glass in Ireland at the Battle of Ballyshannon against the Anglo-Norman forces led by the Fitzgeralds. In 1248, Rory's brother Dovgal McCrory and Owen McDougall arrived in Norway requesting that Hakon Hakonson, King of Norway, should award one of them the kingship of the Clan Summerley's ancestral lands in Scotland. Both men were identified as kings whilst campaigning with the Norwegian's royal forces in 1253. This could indicate that Hakon had originally intended for both men to hold kingship, possibly with Dovgal in the Hebrides and Owen on Man. Dovgal was active in Ireland, helping the native Gaelic fight off the Anglo-Norman encroachment into Connacht in 1259. His daughter would marry into the O'Connors with her dowry consisting of 160 Gallo Glass warriors, commanded by Dovegall's brother, Alain. This would build upon the family's earlier involvement of being swords for hire, and would set a precedent for the clan for generations to come. The family still held interests and lands in Scotland and Norway. In fact, after the signing of the Treaty of Perth in 1266, where Norway recognised Scottish sovereignty over the disputed territories, would just so happen to contain Clan McGrory's lands for a lump sum of 4,000 marks and an annual payment of 100 marks. The clan would actually gain some lands from this treaty. But although they had supported the Norwegian authority over the area, they were now subjects to the Scottish Crown. Dovgall is then claimed to have left to live with his son Erika, a baron of northern Norway. While descendants have been claimed from this line, they are based off a later secondary source that doesn't state its original source, so we can't know if the McGrory's or the Dugglesons line of Norway continues. Elaine would lead the clan as a loyal Scottish magnate, along with the rest of his clan Somerley kinsmen forming political marriages that saw them allied with the MacDougalls, MacDonalds and Lamonts. His two illegitimate sons seem to have continued another age-old tradition of the clan, of being rather unruly and during the, the Scottish War of Independence, the powerful MacDougalls had submitted to the English crown. The McGrory seem to have used this time to go a bit rogue, to the point where the earls, sheriffs and other lords of the Isles, such as Clan MacDonald, were writing to the English King Edward of England for some help. All the while, the McRorys were refusing to pay the revenue that King Edward II was owed. It was said that Lachlan McRory, 
is such a high and mighty Lord, he'll never answer to anyone except under great force or through fear of you. Lachlan was more of an ally with Robert Bruce than a subject. They used each other to further their own goals, but Lachlan's successor Rory would submit to the Bruce and gain the Lordship. He would prove a powerful ally before being killed along with Robert's brother Edward at the Battle of Forgard in Ireland. His illegitimate son would claim the title, but subsequent feuding with his aunt and others meant they were severely weakened as a clan. Raglan himself would be assassinated and the lands would eventually fall to the Macdonalds. By this stage, the McCrories had become well established as Gallaglass in Ireland. They may be the progenitor of the McCrories in Ulster, although this branch does claim to be descended from the Kinaloan and subsequently Nile of the Nine Hostages. Another branch was given land in Aberdeenshire by the Stuarts, possibly as a way to centralise the family so the Stuarts could use these hardened soldiers when needed. Many branches would exist all over Ireland and Scotland, some related, some just descended from another Rory. But either way, like many clans before them, their position as powerful magnates and lords was at an end, but their story was definitely not. If you wish to learn more about the path these men walked, the histories of Gallowglass clans and their Viking ancestors, come across the clans and dynasties. But until then, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Hey guys, thank you so so much for supporting the Q&A last weekend. Once again, it was a massive success. Uh, get on over to Maniacal's page and definitely subscribe to his channel. Once again, he is covering a lot of Irish history using the game Crusader Kings Tree. So get on over there if you want even more Irish medieval history and support the wider Irish medieval community. Furthermore, next weekend... We are once again doing another Q&A with Denton and Michael from Clans and Dynasties. We are covering uh, the Northman. I'm also covering the Northman in my own personal review this weekend. So check out that video if you want to. Uh, I'm not forcing it anyway. Regardless, make sure to save all your questions for the upcoming Q&A this weekend. Other than that guys, that's really it. And all the best.